Welcome back to Management 416. In this video lecture, I will be covering Capstone's R&D interface. It is really critical that you have read the team member guide at this point in time. And if you have not done so yet, you may wish to read the team member guide before watching this lecture. I also want to remind you of the great resources available to you from the Capsim company. Phone support is available 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on weekdays and email support is available seven days a week. If you haven't contacted them yet, you are missing out on a great resource. Let's take a deeper dive into the decision-making process that you will be following while making decisions for your simulated company. The changes that you make in the R&D interface are related to the first P of the marketing mix, product. You will find that at the start of round one, your company has some issues. One of the issues is that the company's products are not ideally positioned into the market. In R&D, you are going to focus on the positioning, age, and reliability of your current products, and you will also have the option to invent new products. So you're going to reposition existing products on the perceptual map. You're going to make sure that the age of the product meets customer demands. You will also look into the reliability and make sure it is in line with customers' expectations. If it fits your strategy, you will also invent new products to address the changing marketplace and take advantage of new opportunities. Before we get started, let's remind ourselves of a few important characteristics of the simulation that we need to keep in mind when making decisions. This is our perceptual map. This is how customers are going to think about our products and how they are positioned. Size and performance are the two dimensions on the perceptual map. Each year, all consumers, independent of the market segment to which they belong, will expect faster and smaller products. That means that everyone expects you to create higher performing and smaller products over time. The customer segments move on the perceptual map at predetermined drift rates. Market segments will not move faster to catch up with products that are better than customer expectations. Even if the companies in the industry were to produce products that are better than what customers expect, the segments will not move faster. So there is no benefit in trying to produce products that are better than what customers expect. Information on the positioning of the segment centers and the drift rates can be found in the industry conditions report. Another important point is that the ideal position for products is usually not the same as the segment center. Here you can see that within each segment circle, there is an ideal spot where demand is the highest. It's this spot for the low end, traditional, high end, performance, and size. For the traditional segment, the segment center and the ideal spot are the same. But for all the other segments, the segment center and the ideal spot are not the same. You can see that, for example, the ideal spot for the high-end market is ahead of the segment circle, as customers in the high-end segment have a strong preference for higher performing products. You can see that the ideal spot for the low-end segment trails the segment center, as customers in the low-end segment are very price sensitive and they prefer a lower performing product if it comes at a lower price. You can find information on the ideal spot offsets, which determine where the ideal spots are compared to the segment centers in the industry conditions report. Let's cover a few basic rules that you need to keep in mind when playing the simulation. You will be using R&D to make revisions to your products and to launch new products. In R&D, you can change the positioning of your products on the perceptual map. You can also change the product's reliability by changing the MTVF. When a product is moved on the perceptual map, customers perceive it as newer and improved, but not brand new. And so the simulation will automatically cut the perceived age in half whenever you reposition your product on the perceptual map. Changing the MTBF alone does not affect a product's age. So if you change the MTBF of a product without changing the size or the performance, the age will remain the same. 
When you enter a product's new performance, size, and reliability, the simulation will tell you how long R&D needs to complete a revision. It is possible for revision projects to take longer than one year. However, if an R&D project has not finished by the 31st of December, it is not possible to create a new project for that product on January 1st of the next year. This means that you will need to wait a year before you can make additional revisions. In the case of revisions, you usually want the projects to finish in less than a year. Make sure to verify the completion dates after all decisions in all departments have been entered before finalizing your decisions. Changes in some other departments, especially TQM, can affect the completion dates. You do not have to worry about old inventory. When a product revision launches, unsold units built prior to the revision date are reworked free of charge to match the new specifications and all your inventory will meet these new specifications. R&D project costs are driven by the amount of time that they take to complete. A six-month project costs you half a million dollars and a one-year project costs you one million dollars. Invention projects, where you create an entirely new product, take at least one year to complete. When your company puts two or more products into R&D at the same time, or when automation is high, project lengths will increase. Your company can have one to eight products. All new products require capacity and automation, and you have to purchase them the year prior to your new product's release date. It takes time to build plant and automation, so you have to think about this in advance. If you launch a new product without capacity and automation, you will not be able to manufacture your new product. It is also not possible to produce new products prior to the release date. So even when your new capacity and automation are active on January 1st, if your new product launches on July 1st, your capacity and automation will stand idle until that release date. Products that are created or moved close to existing products have a shorter R&D completion time because your company already knows how to make those products and R&D can take advantage of existing technology. Total quality management activates in round four, and there are some investments that you can do in TQM that decrease R&D times. Let's take a closer look at the perceptual map. You can see two circles for each market segment on the perceptual map. The inner line is called the fine cut, and the fine cut is always two and a half units from the segment center. The outer line is called the rough cut, and the rough cut is always four units of the segment center. If your product is positioned outside the fine cut, demand drops quickly. If your product is positioned outside the rough cut, customers see this as a deal breaker and they will not purchase your product. In general, you want to make sure your products are positioned within the fine cut and as close to the ideal spot as possible. Let's apply what we have learned and make some decisions in R&D. Where you need to start is by taking a look at the industry conditions report to find the segment centers and ideal spots at the end of each round. I recommend that you use Microsoft Excel to reduce the need for hand calculations. And I will be demonstrating this throughout. So let's go to the industry conditions report and take a look at the segment centers for the low end and the ideal spot offsets which determine how far away the ideal spot is removed from the segment center. So I'm going into Capstone. And from there, I am going to Decisions. And I confirm that I want to launch the web spreadsheet. I'm going to look for the Industry Conditions Report. So I'm going to Reports, Industry Conditions Report. And what I'm going to look for is a table with the segment centers. This is a table with the segment centers, and I'm going to copy paste this into Microsoft Excel.
now I have the segment centers pasted in Microsoft Excel. However, what I need to know is the ideal spots. Where are the ideal spots? So I'm going back to the industry conditions report to find the ideal spot offset, which really means how far is the ideal spot removed from the segment centers. And you can find the ideal spot offsets in table three in the industry conditions report. We are looking currently at the low end market. So I'm just going to do this for the low end market, but you can see that the ideal spot offset for performance is minus 0.8 for the low end and plus 0.8 for size. This means that customers in the low end prefer products that are 0.8 lower in performance than the segment center and 0.8 higher or greater in size than the segment center. So this is the information that I need here. I'm going to write segment centers here so I do not get confused. And then I will make a new column with ideal spots here. And I'm just gonna do this for the low end for now. So basically, I want to copy this, but taking into account these changes. I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to copy this. Okay. At the end of round zero, our ideal spot is the segment center of 2.5 and 17.5 minus 0.8 for performance and plus 0.8 for size. So in this cell equals this number here, the segment center, minus 0.8 for performance, and size equals this cell here, our segment center, plus 0.8 for size. Okay, and then we can just drag this for all our rounds. So this is how you can use Excel to do all these calculations at once without you having to hand calculate this every round. So this is the result that you would have gotten. Going back to our Excel sheet, we see that the ideal spot at the end of round zero is 1.7 and 18.3. And at the end of round one, our ideal spot for the low end is 2.2 in performance and 17.8 in size. So that's what we have here too. The low end ideal spot at the end of round zero is 1.7, 18.3, and at the end of round one is 2.2, 17.8. And currently our position, our low end position, which is acre, okay, is positioned at performance of three and size of 17. So you should ask yourself at this point in time, how are you going to reposition your low end product? And maybe you want to take a second to think about it and pause the lecture. What I would suggest at this point in time is, okay, let's reposition our low end product so that it is very close to the ideal spot or so that it is in the ideal spot at the end of round one. We would change our performance from three to 2.2 and we would change size from 17 to 17.8. We'll do that first. We'll go change performance to 2.2 and size to 17.8. Okay, so we're going to change performance for acre to 2.2 and size to 17.8. And whether or not we wanna change the MTBF, we may wanna take a look at the capstone courier. So we'll do that for a second. So you can activate the capstone courier here and go straight to the low end segment. And here, here are the low end customer buying criteria. Okay, and for MTBF, it's not very important to this customer, but you can see that they are okay with an MTBF between 12,000 and 17,000. So now it's really up to you to decide whether or not you want to lower this MTBF. Currently the MTBF is at 14,000. It's not very important for the market segment. And obviously higher MTBF means higher materials costs. Again, this is really a decision that you should make for yourself, but for now, let me just lower it to 13,000. And then I'm going to click recalculate. 
I want you to take a moment to see what has changed here. Again, maybe you want to just pause the lecture and decide for yourself what has changed before you listen to what I'm going to say. But you can see here that, okay, we have a revision date for our new product. Our revised product is going to be ready September 14th. That's when it will launch. And when we revise, the H is going to be 2.7. And you can also see this very well on the H profile down here. We started off with an H of 4.6 at the start of the year. Our product continued to age until it was 5.3 years old in September. That is when we launched the revision. And as soon as the revision is on the market, the customer now perceives our product to be 2.7 years old. And again, we continue to age until we are now at the end of the year at 2.9 years old. You can also see our new product acre here is in red and it is on the perceptual map more to the left and higher than the original product. So there are actually a, a few problems with this. And I chose to demonstrate a product revision for the low end market segment because it is the most difficult market segment to reposition your products for. Let's go and take a look again at what this market segment finds important. So I'm going to the capstone courier to the low end segment and you can see that price is their number one criterion. Over half of their decision is influenced by price. And we're not making choices about price in the R&D department. So it's not really relevant to what we're thinking about now. But you can see that the second most important thing for this market segment is the age. And they prefer an age of seven. This is followed by positioning. So positioning is less important than age for the low end customer. And then ultimately reliability, which is the least important customer buying criterion. Ideal age is quite important to the decision. However, what we have done is we have moved further away from our ideal age. We were at an age of 5.3 in September, and then when we launched our new product, it went down to 2.7, which is quite far removed from the ideal age of 7. The other thing that we did that you may not have realized is we actually made a worse product. If we move Acre closer to the ideal spot at the end of round one, we actually make a larger and slower product. And while this product is positioned closer to what the customers want at the end of round one, it doesn't really make sense to spend all this money to create a worse product. And then on top of it, cut the H in half, which is not really what our customers want. And as you can see, the cost for this R&D project is $713,000. Maybe for the low end, we need to take it a little slower and kind of determine when we should do a product revision. Maybe it shouldn't be right in round one. If we don't want H to be cut in half and we don't want to invest money in R&D to develop a lower performing, larger sensor, what should we really do? We should wait to do an R&D project, but how long should we wait? The low end market is a bit different than the others because age is important. And with an ideal age of seven, that means this customer segment does not like frequent product revisions. And therefore we should very carefully plan our product revisions for this market segment. Let's take a look at how this market segment moves over multiple years. And in the slides that follow, you will see a pink spot, which will represent the ideal spot for the low end market, a black dot, which will represent the segment center, a blue dot, which represents the current product's positioning, the fine cut circle, which is a solid circle, and a rough cut circle, which is a dashed circle. So this is the situation at the end of year zero. You can see here, this is where our product is positioned at performance three and size 17. This is the segment center here, which is at performance two and a half and size 17 and a half. And the ideal spot trails the product at performance 1.7 and size 18.3. We also know that at the end of year zero, the product's age is 4.7 and that the preferred age is seven. Even though the product is not that close to the ideal spot, we probably do not want to do an R&D project that would make our product worse and cut the H in half. This is the low end market segment at the end of year one. You can see that our product is still positioned ahead of the ideal spot. 
and it's actually right on top of the segment center. And if we were to do a revision now, we would cut the H in half from 5.6 to 2.8. Since 2.8 is still quite far from the ideal H of 7, and H is so important to this market segment, it would be better, again, not to touch the product this year. Also, moving the product closer to the ideal spot still means that we are making a larger and slower product. And that, again, doesn't seem to be a very smart decision. This is the low end at the end of year two. Our product is now very close to the ideal spot. Our product is also 6.6 .6 years old, which is quite close to the ideal age of seven. This could mean that demand for our product will be quite high this year. And if we do a revision now, we would cut the age in half to 3.3. It's probably still too early to do a revision right now. This is the low end market segment at the end of year three. Our product is now trailing the ideal spot, but it is still close to it, and our product is still within the fine cut. Its age is very close to the ideal age of seven. It still doesn't seem to be the right decision to do a revision now. Now we are at the end of year four. The product is still within the fine cut, but it's getting very close to exiting it. And even though our age is 1.6 year older than the ideal age of seven, a revision at this time would mean that we would cut the age in half to 4.3, which is 2.7 years removed from the ideal age. However, we do not want our product to move out of the fine cut. It seems like a good idea to launch a revision late in year four or early in year five. Here is the situation at the end of year five. Our product is now going to move out of the fine cut during year five, and that is something that we will want to avoid. If we did a revision at the end of year four, our product would have a new age of 4.3. Thinking about where to position our new low end revision should take into account that the ideal age for the market segment is seven. This means that you do not want to have to reposition it again before the end of the simulation. We should think ahead and make sure that we launch a new product that is still within the fine cut at the end of round eight. What we could do is we could take the ideal position at the end of round eight as our target. This is our product at the end of year four with the fine cut here. And this is where our fine cut is at the end of year eight with the segment center and the ideal spot. What we would need to do is we would need to do a revision project that moves our current product close to the ideal spot at the end of year eight. Here are the ideal spots that we calculated earlier, and you can see that the ideal spot at the end of round eight is performance of 5.7 and size of 14.3. Currently, our product is in performance three and size 17. That does seem like quite a big move on the perceptual map. If it's such a big move on the perceptual map, it may be that we need to have the product in R&D for longer than a year. Why don't we just try out now at the start of round one, how long it would take us to move our product from its current positioning into the ideal spot at the end of round eight. Performance of 5.7 and size of 14.3. Let's see what would happen. Performance of 5.7 and size of 14.3. We can see that Acre, that our new product Acre is moving forward by a lot. And in terms of how long this project would take us, we are currently in the year 2021. We are making decisions on January 1st of 2021. And you can see that this project is not going to be revised until January 3rd of 2023. So it's going to have to be an R&D for two years. Based on this analysis, we know that we want to probably launch a new low-end product either late in round four or early in round five. We also know that it will take about two years in R&D to do such a big redesign. Keeping this in mind, you probably will need to start an R&D project for a new low-end project in round two or round three, which wouldn't launch until round four or round five. And that's an example of how to make R&D decisions. I just want to emphasize that the low-end market is the most challenging market for R&D decisions, which is why I've taken it as an example. 
the other markets are more forgiving because they have lower preferred ages. And so you can do revisions much more frequently. That's the R&D interface. And before we end the R&D lecture, I want to remind you that it is really critical to always make decisions that align with your strategy. The online help guide provides you with lots of information on what kind of decisions you should be making in the different departments depending on the strategy that you have chosen to pursue. Let's take a look at where you can find that information. When I'm in the decision-making interface, I can go to help and from there I can go to online help. Once I'm in the online help area, I can search for topics. So let's search for strategies. Here you can find a link to the six basic strategies. You should really familiarize yourself with these six basic strategies. Let's take a look, for example, at the broad cost leader. The online help guide will give you a general introduction of the broad cost leader strategy what kind of mission statement such a company would have. You can also see that under tactics, the online help guide gives you specific things that you should be doing in each department. So in terms of research and development, they suggest a few tactics. They suggest that you will keep your existing product line and maintain a presence in every segment. When we take a look at the suggested product positions, we can see that not only do you have products in each market segment? Capsum actually suggests you have two products in the low end and two products in the traditional segment. It also says that you will work to keep your products up to date in each segment despite high automation levels. And our perceptual map suggests that even though it would be wonderful to keep your products close to the ideal spots, it is also okay to trail the ideal spots because you will have very high automation in order to really reduce your costs. When you have higher automation, that means it takes longer for your products to be in R&D when you do repositionings. Also, in order to reduce costs, you may not be right on top of the ideal spots, but rather trail it a little bit. The online help guide provides you with tactics for each department. We just discussed research and development, but they're also available for marketing, production, and finance. This is where we ended for the R&D department of the CAPSIM simulation.